In this video, we are going to talk about how to round numbers. There are two cases. Before we go into the first case, let's take a look at the place value one more time. So we have a decimal right here, right? On the left hand side of the decimal, we start with the ones and tens and then the hundred. After the hundred, we have a thousand and then we have the ten thousand, the hundred thousand, so on and so forth. Now, what you have to look at is the right hand side of the decimal point. So the, on the right hand side of the decimal point, we have six number, right? So the decimal notation we call there are six decimal places because there are six numbers on the right hand side of the decimal point. Pay attention. On the right hand side of the decimal point, we start with the tenths. There is no one there is no ones on the right hand side so on the right hand side we start with the tenth and then the hundredth the thousand the ten thousand the hundred thousand and the millions all right so that's how the right hand side works there is no ones on the right hand side so let's take a look at case one case one is if the indicated place value is less than five we don't change anything just drop all the digits on the right hand side so we are trying to round this number 6.92 37 to the nearest hundredth where is the hundredth the hundredth is the second digit on the right hand side of the decimal point how do you decide whether you change or no change so this is what you have to do you look at the value right next to I should say on the right hand side of the hundredth. Hundredth means two decimal places, the second digit on the right hand side of the decimal point. When you do roundings, look at the next digit on the right. So the next digit on the right is a three. Since three is less than five, you do not do add in anything. So 6.9237, if I ask you to round that to the nearest hundredth, or I ask you to round that to the round that to two decimal places, then that is approximately equal to 6.92. That is the hundredth. What if I ask you to round that to the thousands? Where is the thousand? The thousand is the three. So this three is the thousand. So 6.9237. If I ask you to round that to the nearest thousand, so that means I am looking at this number right now. So that is where I have to stop. And then you look at the next number, 7. That would be case 2. Since 7 is greater than or equal to 5, you have to add 1 to the 3. So that is approximately equal to 6.924. You add 1 to the 3 and then you drop the 7. That belongs to case 2. Let's take a look at case 2. If the indicated place value is greater than or equal to 5, you add 1 to the digit on the left and then drop the rest of the digits. Alright, so let's say uh, this number, I want you to round that to the whole, to the nearest whole number, 6.9237. Whole number. Whole number means right here. Is 9 greater than or equal to 5? The answer is yes. That means you add 1 to the 6 and then you drop the rest of the digits. So that is approximately equal to 7. You add 1 to the 6 and then you drop the 9 and the rest of the digits. So that's how rounding works. Let's take a look at this. 12.385, you want to round that to the nearest tenth. Tenth means one decimal place. So one decimal place. Uh, this is where we have to stop and then you look at the next digit on the right since a is greater than or equal to 5 so that means you add 1 to the 3 then 12.385 you add 1 to the 3 so that is approximately equal to 12.4 all right uh, what if I ask you to uh, round that to two decimal places 12.385 two decimal places Two decimal places means I have to keep two numbers on the right hand side of the decimal point since 5 is greater than or equal to 5. Equal to 5 also add 1. So it's equal to 5. You add 1 to the 8. So that will be 12.38. Just, just 338. No, no 5. What if I ask you to round that to the nearest whole number? So whole number 12.385. Whole number is the entire 12. Is 3 greater than or equal to 5? The answer is no. That means you don't add 1. So that is approximately equal to 12. And then you drop the rest of the digits. So that's how you do rounding. Uh, most of the time, the 
book they don't say to the tenth, the hundredth, the thousand, the ten thousand, and the million because they uh they want to keep the language simple. So for the tenth, they will just say one decimal place. For the hundredth, they will just say two decimal places because two digits on the right hand side of the decimal point. The thousands, they will just say three decimal places. The ten thousand, four decimal places. The one, five decimal places. The nine six decimal places, so that means you don't have to memorize the hundred, the thousand, the ten thousand, the hundred thousand, and the million. So using one, two, three, four, five, six decimal places are way better and way easier. Usually in statistics, they won't ask you to keep six decimal places. Uh, usually they ask you to uh, round to two to four decimal places. They won't go that crazy. Six six is too too many. All right. So let's do more exercise. So. In this problem, I ask you to do a lot of rounding. So part A, I ask you to write the given numbers to the nearest tenth. Tenth means one decimal place. How do I know? Because I memorized this picture, tenths. Tenths means the first digit on the right hand side of the decimal point that is one decimal place. So what I have to look at is I have to start right here, right? I have to keep this, 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 and that. So what you have to look at is the number right next to it. So the three, the five, the nine, and then this five, right? So three is less than five. So we don't add one to, to the four. So this is approximately equal to, be careful. I want you to write this approximately equals to here. So that is approximately equal to this symbol. This is approximately equal to, this is exactly equal to, they are not the same. Approximately equals to, 15.4 and then this is approximately equals to 100.5 is greater than or equal to 5 you add 1 to the 2 so that will be a 3 and then this one you add 1 to the 9 but in the meantime after you add 1 to the 9 the 9 will add 1 to the 2 right so that is approximately equals to negative 32 but should i keep the zero the answer is yes i ask you to keep one decimal place then that means I force you to keep the zero in, in there. So let's talk about GPA, grade point average. How do you write a, a GPA? You use two decimal places, right? You don't write my GPA is four. You don't say this. You say my GPA is 4.00 or my GPA is 3.98. You use two decimal places. And then this one five is greater than or equal to five. You add one to the nine, but in the meantime, nine add one to the three. So that is approximately equals to four. All right, and then two decimal places. Let's switch colors for that. So that means I need to keep two digits, two digits, uh, two digits, and two digits. So this one, the four, is less than five. We don't add one to the 10.77. So that is just uh, 10.77. Zero, zero is not greater than five at all. So we keep the 32. So that is negative 0 0.32. And then this one A is greater than or equal to 5. So you add 1 to the 9. 41 plus 9 is equal to 50. So that is approximately 0 0.50. And then this one you add 1 to the 9. 79 plus 1 is equal to 80. So that is approximately equal to 36.80. Okay. So if you know what to do, go ahead and do it. You don't have to wait for me. The next one, three decimal places. I need to keep this, this, okay, this, this, and that. So zero is not greater than five, so that is approximately equals to 0 0.148. And then zero is not greater than five, so that is 4.010. Yes, it, if you don't keep the last zero, that doesn't change the value, but I asked for three decimal places then you have to keep the zero. 4.00. It doesn't change your GPA without the two zeros at the end, right? But when you report your GPA, you still say I have 4.00. You don't say I have four. 2.3. Okay, I don't even have three decimal places. Then you make it. So that is around 2.300. And then this one, you add 1 to the 9. 129 plus 1 is 130. So that is around 0 0.130. And then this one, you add 1 to the 0. So that is around 0 0.001. Uh, what if the last digit is like a 2? Then you don't add 1 to the 0. If the last digit is a 2, 
0 0.0 0 0 0 2 then that is approximately equals to 0 0.0 followed by three zeros because you don't add one to the third zero all right hold number so hold number change color again i need to keep this 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 one this one and that one one is not greater than five so that is approximately equals to three five is greater than or equal to five you add one to the zero uh, nine is greater than five you add one to 29 then you get a 30. two is not greater than z five five greater than or equal to five so you don't add one to the zero so that is approximately equals to zero and the last one a is greater than or equal to five you add one so that is approximately equals to one and then the last one, five decimal places. So this is the fifth decimal places. And then this is the fifth decimal places. You don't add one to the eight. So that is approximately equals to 14.43948. This one, you do add one to a two. So that is approximately equal to 3.3 zeros. And then, Hold on, I marked this one wrong. I marked this one wrong. Let's do this again. Five places. One, two, three, four, five. Right here. You add one to the nine. So that is three zero followed by a 30. Again, I asked for five decimal places. So you do have to keep the last zero. Although the last zero doesn't change the value of the decimal. All right. So that will be all in this video. Uh, if you think my video is helpful to your learning, please click the like, subscribe, share this out for me. I see you all in the next lesson. Of course, I appreciate your help really, really much.